Well, good morning, folks. I'm getting a little bit of a late start. It is hot. I'm going to tell y'all what is hot. Currently, it's 1030. Now, what I've done right here, I've been having some requests to do some live bait fishing, so that's what we're going to do today. But, well, that's a big old plane. The thing of it is, I thought I was going to have a hard time catching bait, which the bait is deep right now. Right now, the surface temperature is climbing up to around 88, 89 degrees on top. It's as hot as it's going to be, or just about as hot as it's going to be on the surface. And most of the bait, for, for the most part, throughout the lake are deep. And I went across some shad using this cheap little depth finder, and I'll show it to you. Lit up the back of the boat with the transducers located right here at the back. So I took a net and made a cast approximately where I thought those fish were. It sunk and I'll be doggone, I caught about five dozen big baits. Blessing, that's just nothing but a blessing. What we're gonna do is fish, I've got two rods with me and may use them both, but I'm gonna start off with a seven foot uh, no, it's a seven foot six sow belly rod. Light, uh, medium action, excuse me. And now I have a 14 pound test leader, one of about 20 feet on here, a long leader, and it's mono. The reason why I'm using mono today, we may tie into a few big fish. I need to stretch. Um, we're gonna be fishing vertical structure, bridge columns with these baits. And uh, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> Mono will take much more abuse than fluorocarbon will when it's tied to braid. This is 15 pound test frost braid. 3,000 size die with spinning reel. And that's what we're going to do. As far as hooks, well these are pretty good sized baits, but because it's hot, and that's the only reason, I'm using a size one alt Gamakatsu hook right here and I have it snailed that's a snail knot and I have a size 2 split shot I believe that's a size 2 let me be accurate with this now I may have to increase that split shot size I'm not sure and I'll explain why yes it's a size 2 size 2 may have to go a little bit heavier I may have to double up on them the reason is, is because I have to find out what depth the fish are. Um, it depends on how much water that's being pulled out of here from the dam. Now if, and now, if they're not pulling a lot of water, the fish will just generally always be on the bottom or very close to the bottom. If they're pulling a lot of water, the fish will suspend. The reason why they do that is because the shad that's relating to those columns will do the same. Hence, the game fish will follow. It's that simple. Nothing to it. But let's get on out there and see what we can do. And cross your fingers, we may catch a few big ones today. Whoa. Look at the comorants. Or comorants. The pretty birds. Whoa. Whoa. Right yonder, see that big old bridge? Whoa, hey man, whoa, whoa, whoa! All right, folks, let's get our net ready. We're here at the location, by the way. Let's get our trolling motor dunked. Okay. And let's catch us a bait. And put it right in here right here in this area this is their first hole maybe there's a fish here now this is 22 feet of water 22 feet of water okay let's see see these are some big bait right here big bait and i had a lot of questions about richard do you put salt in with your bait absolutely salt is a must 
Now what we're gonna do is barely hook him through both lips. We'll turn around here and see what we can do. I was wanting big gizzard shad, but I got a net full of these right off the bat, and I tell you, that's a blessing. Hot as it is, folks, it's a lot of work to throw a cast net. It's a tremendous amount of work, but let's just pitch it right there and let it fall down there to the bottom. Let's adjust that drag. Boy, boy. and hammered it folks that's what I'm looking for right there and bigger well that's a pretty fish right there we'll go out in the sun and look at him y'all excuse me I'm up under this bridge in the shade the reason why is because that's where the fish are you have to fish where the fish are this thing is pulling now that's a good one right there. We'll take a look at him. We'll net him real quick, take a look at him because he's a healthy, healthy fish. Come on in here, boy. Well, my net's malfunctioning a little bit. Yeah, that's more like it right there. Why I said it's a pretty fish. See the markings on the side right there? Now the winter time, those markings would be a lot more pronounced black blotches, birthmarks, I call them. That's a pretty large mouth right there. There's something in here bigger. If we can get them to bite, let's let it go. All right, there he goes. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a lot of fun. That old man got mad because I was catching fish out here. Look at it, he's leaving right now. Under the old man. Look here, folks. Oh, my. My, my, I'm on a different column right here. Y'all ready? Let's see what we got here. Mmm. -hmm. Not that big. Not that big at all, but fighting, my goodness. Look here. Golly. I tell you, this is sort of a rough day of fishing. This is spotty bass right here. Sure is. It's starting to fight now a little bit. We'll net him, that's a spot. I got away from that other column, can't count the fish being so small. That's a good spotty bass. I gotta fix my net. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's a good spot. There ain't nothing wrong with that. The wind is terrible out here. And it's a hot, hot, scorching type wind, if y'all know what I'm talking about. But that fish was about 20 feet deep. Right there. That's a spotted bass. And a pretty fish, too. Two and a half pounds or better. Two and three quarter, maybe. These fishes, spotted bass, they're heavy. Heavy. Oh, boy, let's let him go. Come on back, boy. I'm going to try that again. I tell you what, folks, there's nothing to this kind of fishing. The only thing is, it's in the summertime, when the water temperature is hot like this, uh, you have to fish pretty quick, even with a live bait tank. A lot of your bait are getting pretty bad shape pretty quick. Pretty quick. Here's another fish right here. Got him. Got him. That might be another spotted bass. I don't know. 
he sure is fighting like one. Golly. Look at that fish fight. Now that's a largemouth. Now we're catching some better fish. That's about, mm, I don't know, a two and a half pounder probably. Come on back here. That's a chunky fish right there. He's bigger than that. He's pushing three pounds. Sure is. Stocky fish. There's more fish right there than what I think. Let's get in here with it again. Get on back in there. I'm having fun. But your what was I saying? Your live bait is a little aggravating to keep this time of year. Uh, especially shad. You need to put the salt to them. You don't have to let them run long either. Three or four seconds and just go ahead and six seconds at the most because they'll swallow they'll swallow that shad, swallow the hook, and you'll kill that fish. That's important. When you're live bait fishing, you have to really time your hook set just right, folks. I would, like I said, I would rather miss them. Then there's a fish right there. Ah, see, I missed him. I said, that's good. Well, I don't know if it's good or not. I should let him go another couple seconds, but whatever. At least he didn't swallow the hook. But we'll get another bait down there. He'll eat another one if he's right there. Usually, I'll, I'll skip all the cast netting because it's just a long, boring deal. Um, a lot of work involved in it, especially in the summertime. And like I said, what I'm doing is simple. My depth finder is at the front, the transducer is at the back. And uh, the last batch of shad that I caught was right beside these barges right here. And I seen them trolling along, along these barges right here. And I seen them on my depth finder and through right there on the transducer side out from the boat six or eight feet. And I ended up with some big bait. This is the kind of bait that I like for big fish. There he is. Golly, there's a bunch of them in here. <clears throat> Y'all see that? Now, is that going to be a small mouth or is that going to be a spotty bass? <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. Woo-wee! You fighting son of a gun, you. That fish bolted up. We're going to be able to have him out here in the sun. Look at him. Ooh, look here. Large mouth. Good one, too. I thought it was a spot. As strong as he come up. About four seconds, folks. With a live bait. He's just right. I'm going to let him. I got so much stuff in the way right here. Come here. Now. Ah. Woo, that's a good one. Good bass. My, 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 my. Woo! Quit, quit. See where that hook is? That's where I like to hook. That's, that's what we're looking for right there. Just good quality, deep summertime bass. Let's let it go. Okay, folks, let's resuscitate her. That water's hot. When she starts biting down, a little bit you can tell when they all of a sudden they get a lot of energy okay Let's see what she'll do there she goes okay i'm about to lose my tripod barcel didn't come today the reason why is because he's got to have a toenail his big toenails give him trouble all summer. 
and they're going to have to actually cut the thing out and pull it out. Wow. Boy, 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 boy. One knocked a fire out of that. I mean, he hit it. Yeah, that's a good one right here. Man. Now that fish hit it and hit it hard, folks. They wasn't no playing around at all. They wasn't none of this nibbling, nabbling around. It was just boom. Let's see what we got. Yeah, big spotted bass. I mean a big spot. My, 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 my. Now that's what I like right there. Go! I better loosen off on that. When they get that big, that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. When they get that big, I watch them close. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Now we're having fun. Of course, I was the first fish that I caught. <laughs> Come on. Woo, that's a heavy fish right there. That is a heavy spot. That's still a cow. Oh, oh boy, I caught him. That was, that was quick. I'm a quick old man. But that's a good spotted bass. Let's let him go. I thought it was about three and a half pounds, to be honest. Water's hot. There we go. Blessing to be out here, folks. Now it's burning up. Summertime, uh, a lot of times, is a little bit stressful. Not only on the angler, but the fish, uh, the, the fish, excuse me. When it when heat index gets past 100 degrees, it's pretty rough. But what I do is this. I, um, what, what do you call it? Um, I count my blessings. I just love life. And I think that, we, that if you'll do that, if you'll count your blessings, you'll see that, that, that God is great. Hard for me to think out here, but you know, I love this stuff. I tell you, I'm gonna quit fishing. Woo! And somebody know me. I'm gonna quit fishing when my toes is turned up. But until then, I'm gonna hammer down. Let's catch another. That's a one peculiar old man, old man Wallace. He'll stare at you. You can feel it. You can look over at him. He'll throw his head the other way. And all of a sudden, you can turn your head again. He'll. You can feel that. Ooh. And you can look at him. Go, he's. He's a study of people to where he can try to figure them out. That old man's strange old man. I've stated this before, but it's real important. Now, I've never really uh, give my opinion of why it's so important. Now, this is a size one. That's This is what I'm using today. I mean, one all. Now, I will, when the, when the eyelid is away from the shank of the hook like this, this particular hook is designed uh, for a snail knot. You, the reason why is I'm going to stretch this line out in line with the hook. As you can see, the line is in line with the shank of the hook. So when you set the hook, okay, when you set the hook, it is in proper position on the shank of the hook when you tie a palomar knot. I mean a... Um, a snail knot, excuse me. It's hot today, and I've realized that I've been stuttering a lot. When it gets this hot, it's just hard to, to, to really think and talk just right, or it is for me. But, um, yeah. I just want to point that out, folks. Let's get back in here and see if we can catch another. Now, that one knocked a f fire out of it. Let's see what we got. Wow. Yeah, 
Boy. When they do bite it, folks, they, they hit it with authority. Let's see what we got. Another spot. I believe it's the spotted bass. Now, I'm jumping columns. These are just different. Different columns. Wow. Yeah, that's a spot. No doubt. That's why he hit so hard. A spotted bass, I hit a shad a lot harder. A lot harder than, than a largemouth. Another good spot. Now, that old deep, 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 deep water. Woo! Look at there. Got him barely hooked, too. That's the first thing I look for. Is where that hook is. I do not want to gut hook any fish. There we go. That's a big spot. Big, pretty spot. Look at there. What a nice spot. Golly, what a football. Okay. Let's let him go. There's a lot of different methods, a lot of different techniques when it comes to fishing. But now live bait fishing is a very, very productive technique, but it's like all other techniques. There's a lot of ins and outs that you need to learn when it comes to live bait fishing. Vertical structure is no doubt a great place to start in the summer, especially when the water temperature um, exceeds above 80 degrees. And today, it got up to 89, and that's hot water. Uh, not all the bass go deep this time of year. In fact, a lot of fish is up shallow. Um, right now as we speak, no doubt. But a lot of the fish do go deep. Um, this is a time of the year where they can be almost anywhere. Uh, I just, um, the, the thing about live bait fishing is, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, if I can master throwing a cast net and locate the shad. Well, it takes time to do that. If you're just now starting to, to, to fish, to get involved in seasonal patterns when it comes to bass, but it can be mastered. As far as a cast net, you can get buy one, get into your backyard, practice. Um, I would suggest to start off with a six foot or seven foot, three eighths mash cast net. Okay, that's what I would start off with. And then um, bigger, graduate bigger uh, as you go along, if it's legal um, on your lake or wherever you're throwing a cast net. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Thank you, thank you for every doggone thing that y'all have ever done all these years of watching Richard Jean the Fishing Machine on YouTube. Whoa, YouTube, my goodness. Hey, man. Oh, God. Whoa, whoa. Remember, go fishing with your cat. My cause is good. Yeah.